Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Lunchtime with the Lord on this Monday. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. Good Lord's Day yesterday. hope that your week is starting out good here on this Monday, uh, whether you're at work watching this on your lunch break or at home or watching it later on. Uh, we want to say thank you uh, for spending some time with us in the Word of God. And uh, what we have been doing over the last week, week and a half, have we have been taking a verse of Scripture uh, from your daily Bible reading, uh, those uh, those that are trying to go from Genesis to Revelation in the year, the yearly Bible reading, we've been trying to choose a verse in in the in the passage of Scripture that you would be reading for the day, and I hope it's been an encouragement to you. And I want to I want to encourage you if uh, perhaps you've you've gotten off track a little bit or you're a little bit behind in your daily Bible reading, don't give up, uh, don't quit. Uh, it's not a race. Uh, it, the key is being in the Word of God every day. And so I want to encourage you to pick the Bible back up if you've, if you've gotten off track and uh, just, just start where you left off and uh, continue on. It takes determination. It takes dedication. It, it, it takes forming a habit of getting up and doing this daily. And I want to encourage you, if you've got off track, don't, don't be discouraged to the point that you're going to quit. Just pick the Bible back up and start reading where you left off. I believe today's uh, Bible reading, uh, if you're doing the Genesis through Revelation Bible reading, a uh, yearly plan, I believe today is supposed to be Genesis, I'm sorry, Exodus 22 to 24. And uh, we're going to find a verse in Exodus chapter 23, verse number 7, that we're going to speak on today. Uh, but let me just talk a little bit about this. these chapters of Scripture. And... Um, uh, these chapters of scriptures, primarily uh, the majority of uh, the information there has to do with uh, the law. Moses was received the law from the Lord that Moses is giving the law uh, to the people. And uh, much of the law, we understand uh, the ceremonial part of the law that was given to, to Moses from the Lord for the Jewish people, um, primarily uh, is is for the Jewish people. For, for instance, uh, uh, the the feast and such uh, that they were to uh, to observe the Passover and all those things um, that ceremonial aspect of the law uh, had to do with is really foreshadow of of Christ to come uh, foreshadow the gospel and and so much of that uh, doesn't really apply to us today we understand that Jesus fulfilled the law the Bible says that he came not to break the law but to fulfill the law. And we understand that, but there are some portions of the of the law that was given to Moses uh, that would even apply today. Um, some of the the moral aspect of it, or the uh, what's right and what's wrong uh, type of uh, uh, portions of the law. And our verse today is once uh, one of those uh, verses I believe still would apply today. It doesn't have to do with the ceremonial aspects of of the law which was given to the Jews, uh, you know, uh, observe this or observe that or uh, the type of the sacrificial things that was given uh, under the law that was really just a type and a picture of Christ to come. The verse that we're going to look at today is really, uh, uh, you know, identify some things that are right and some things that are wrong. And I believe they still apply today. Uh, Exodus chapter 23 in verse number 7 says this, Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. Really, you can divide that verse into three uh, statements. And I believe all three of them apply to today in 2021. And uh, really, we can see how uh, relevant this verse is in our day that we're living. Let's break it down a little bit. The first part of that verse tells us, keep thee far, far from a false matter. In other words, uh, put some distance between yourself, you and, and that which is false. In other words, it's encouraging us to be people of truth. Uh, we're to be honest people. And uh, certainly we see New Testament scripture that uh, backs that claim up that God hasn't changed his mind uh, on this aspect uh, that we uh, that truth is no longer important to him and truth is, shouldn't be important to us. We understand that, that's, that that is not what God is teaching. God is uh, taught here and commanded for people to be true, people of truth. And certainly we find that in the New Testament as well. Uh, we, as Christians, should be people of truth, honest people. If there's anybody that uh, should uh, people can count on 
uh, and people can take them at their word. It should be people that are believers in Christ. In fact, the I mean, Jesus himself says this. He says, I am the way, the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. And if we're living for Christ, and Christ is living in us, and it, we're, he's abiding in us, and uh, he's leading us, uh, we're followers of Christ, disciples of Christ, we ought to be people of truth. We ought to be honest people. And in every day in our relationships, we ought to be honest. Uh, in our business, we ought to be honest. Uh, just across the board, we ought to be people of our word. And uh, and certainly uh, there's times that we, we, you know, we may have made a promise. We had every, every intention to keep that promise and something came up and we couldn't uh, do that. But you know what I'm saying? We ought to be people of that are honest. We have to be people of truth. And that, that verse still applies today. The second aspect of this verse uh, says this, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not. God says, do not slay, do not kill the innocent and righteous. Now, let me ask this question. Is there anyone more innocent uh, than a baby? I, I, don't, I don't think you can find one more innocent than a young child. And yet in our day, in our, in our country, there are people that not only believe that it's okay uh, to slay, to kill, to end the life of an unborn child, but they celebrate it as if it's their right, as if they're they're an advanced uh, you know uh, citizen of this country. That you know they look back at people uh, that believes in uh, that abortion is murder. They look back at oh they're old and they're outdated and all those things that they're an advanced. A uh, person in c civilization, like uh, like a, that's an advancement, that's an improvement in civilization. Look, you can read in the Old Testament and find there was pagan places that that sacrificed their children. Listen, this is not an advancement in society when when young people, young children, unborn children are killed. God's not changing his mind on it, by the way. God's not going to evolve with society, uh, or I should say, devolve with society. Uh, to the point where this is an accept something a practice that's accepted in the sight of God. God says this: Do not slay the innocent; don't kill them. And there's no one more innocent uh, than an unborn child. And he's he's saying here: Do not kill them; do not kill the innocent; do not slay them. And uh, we we're living in a day where it's not only accepted, but by many, it's celebrated. And it breaks my heart. I know it breaks your heart as well, but God's not changing his mind on it. And certainly those that, um, I believe, a nation that continues to do it, I, I, mean, I believe judgment is coming. I mean, I, I believe God's judgment will come uh, because of this terrible, terrible practice uh, that we're so guilty of. All right, it continues. Be honest, people. Do not slay the innocent. Here's the third part. For I will not justify the wicked. God says, I'm not justifying the wicked. Now, uh, what happens in our day, uh, we have uh, folks that want to, I mean, man is always trying to justify their evil works in their own sight. I mean, we make excuses up for them, right? Uh, why we do this or why we don't do that or why we're guilty of this or why we believe certain things that, are, that might that, that's against God's word. We make excuses. We try to justify it in our sight. We may, we may even have other people justify it for us. Uh, you know, we have... Uh, media that will justify wicked wicked acts in our day. We have politicians that may justify wicked acts in our day. We have, I, I mean, go on and on and on and on. Uh, we, we make excuses of uh, try to justify a thing, wicked acts that God says is wicked. And uh, But the truth of the matter is when they stand before God in God's court, they're not going to be justified. God said, I'm not justifying the wicked. I'm not changing my mind on these things. And yet people make excuses um, uh, to come up with reasons to justify in their own sight, but in God's sight, they're not going to be justified. Now, I want to close with this. I am thankful uh, to in Christ to be able to be, be called justified. You know, when we talk about salvation, uh, when someone gets saved, there's a lot of Bible words, but biblical terms that, that are just wonderful terms that apply to us. I mean, uh, being born again, being saved, being child of God, being heir of God, joint heirs with Christ, uh, being redeemed. That's a wonderful Bible word. Um, we can go on and on and on, uh, sanctified after we're getting saved. I mean, you just go on and on and on, wonderful Bible terms. But one of those terms is being justified. And we're justified because of Christ, not because of who we are, not because of 
how special we are. Uh, it's because of Christ, his finished work on the cross of Calvary, justified. Uh, we've been, uh, the, the payment has been made, it's been accepted by God, and we've been justified. Our position with Christ being justified because of him. There's a lot of folks that uh, think they're justified and justify their own works in their own sight, uh, make excuses for it. But the Bible talks about in the New Testament, talks about uh, those that make excuses, they'll be without excuse. Um, they'll be without excuse when they stand before the Lord. And I believe these three things still apply today. Now, much of what you're reading in, in this portion of the Bible is ceremonial and things, you know, the practice, or the, uh, the practice of making sacrifices, or uh, as you read in, uh, I think it's this chapter or the next chapter about the ceremonial feast and things like that. Much of that was just given to the Jews uh, for, and it was a foreshadow of Christ, His coming as the Lamb. Uh, you know, once He was this, made the sacrifice of, of Himself, there's no need of any other sacrifice. And the Passover and all those feasts were just a picture, a type of Christ and, and how He fulfilled those, all the law. But there is portions of the law that still apply today. When it identifies wrong and identifies right, and this verse that we've chosen today is one of those that apply today. We should be people of truth, honest. He says, keep thee far from a false matter. We should be concerned uh, for the innocent lives. The Bible says, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not. We, should, we shouldn't justify our wicked ways, uh, make excuses for it when they don't line up with the word of God. Because we may justify it. Others may justify it. We may be justified in others' sight. They may excuse it and make excuses for, for us. But the Bible says, for I will not justify the wicked. This verse still applies to today. Hey, I hope it's been encouragement to you. Hey, I, I just want to say, stay at it. If you've got off course, stick with it. And you'll get through the law portion. I know sometimes that that's difficult as a lot of it applies to, uh, as I've said, to, to, the, uh, to Israel and uh and to the jewish people uh, but just stay with it stick with it uh continue to read and i know god will bless you for it hope it's been an encouragement to you today i hope it's been a challenge to you today let's pray for our nation pray for folks uh today god bless you hope to see you tomorrow on lunchtime with the lord